Hi, this is Lynn Liaz, and I have David Hevner, and David is a former Hollywood film producer, and hi, David. How are you doing? Hey, out there in Liaz land. Good to hey. see you, Lynn. Yeah, Liaz land is very hot and sunny here today, so sweltering. <laughs> cool. Oh, wow. Well, I don't want to be there. I'm in uh, sunny California, except it's not sunny. It's foggy out here it's about 72 degrees wow so david and well i just want to tell the people first david is working on a tv series that is christian based called the last evangelist and we're trying to make that happen aren't we david we sure are lynn and thanks to you it's slowly happening uh we're building up our community god said build a community and boy is it's it's working it's working that is absolutely awesome, and I'm so happy to hear that. Well, we're going to share some things with the people today because the enemy is tearing apart the family. He's tearing apart the church, and this isn't the only way he's doing it, of course, but one of his biggest tools against the family and the body of Christ is Hollywood or entertainment, you know, that could go into many different directions, music, movies, sitcoms, what have you. Um, it's really tearing the family apart. You know, the, these things are teaching people everything that is immoral and ungodly and teaching them that it is normal and it's perfectly acceptable and right. But being that you were heavily involved in the Hollywood film industry, you happen to know a few things and you know how and why this is happening. So I don't know where you want to begin, but why don't you share with the listeners your expertise on this matter? Okay. Okay, Lynn, I will. Thank you. You know, normally when I teach a film seminar on how to make movies, I, I say, I'm going to tell you the secrets of Hollywood. But today on the Lynn Liaz show for the first time, I'm going to tell your listeners some of the secrets the dark side of Hollywood, the secrets to the dark side. And why am I going to do that? Look, we as light need to expose the darkness. And here's the problem. And here's one of the reasons why I'm making The Last Evangelist. We as true believers have kept quiet way too long. We as the remnant, God's true people, have been politically correct way too long. Okay. It's now time to step out. So this series, The Last Evangelist, I play, it, it's an episodic, which means it, 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 episode after episode. I play a federal agent whose job is to, to arrest the unregistered churches, to go and find out who they are and persecute them. Okay, throw them in jail unless they conform. Until one night in my apartment, I meet God, like Paul had his road to Damascus. Uh, I had my road to Damascus in my, in my apartment, my character. I meet God. God gives me a mission, tells me I'm going after the Antichrist, going after the one world government. So I have a Bible in one hand and a gun in the other, and we take off. Now, why did I say that? Because Hollywood says, okay, fine, you can have the gun, but don't talk about the Bible too much, okay? But then the religious system says, fine, you can have the 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 gun too but don't use it and talk about the bible a lot more but when you talk about the bible don't talk about jesus so much just talk about god that way someone who believes in quote a god will think you're talking about their god therefore hey maybe we can sell more tickets or whatever so you have the the hollywood system and the religious system but god says no david we're going with my system straight down through the middle we're not going to take any prisoners and we're telling the truth. Okay, so in order to tell the truth, you must first expose the untruth, the lies, because if people don't have anything to measure the truth by, okay, yes, of course we talk about God, we talk about Christ, but we need to talk about how the devil is coming in and disabling people. So let me start out by this. Hollywood has three agendas, okay? Number one is to make money, they will sell their grandmother for a dollar. Uh, number two is they want power because that's their ego. And number three is the most detrimental part to us Christians, and that's the family. They want to destroy your family. Now, I want you to listen to me out there. If you have a family, 
They want to destroy your family, and then they want to take you down too. That's their agenda. You go, well, why is that? Why is that their agenda? Well, if they can destroy the family, the nucleus, it's a lot easier to go into other parts of our lives if they can rip the family apart, okay? And so I want to share a couple of the secrets with you of how they do that, okay? I told you why they want to do it. Now, I'm going to tell you how they do it, okay? Most people, Lynn, especially Christians, are brain dead, okay? They have been taught this rating system. It's called the, you know, the G-rated, the PG, the PG-13, the R-rated system, rated X. You're familiar with that system, right? Yes. Yeah. And PG-13 okay. has only come about, what, in the last 15 years or something like that? I got so old now, I just can't remember yeah. these things. <laughs> right. But it's all nonsense. It's all a, a facade. It's a smokescreen. <clears throat> okay, it's telling you there's something's G that it's okay uh, to take your kid to. They're going to tell you if it's PG, then maybe it's still okay, but, you know, use some guidance. PG-13, a little more guidance. R, it's all nonsense. None of it means anything because, first of all, it was put together by someone who was not a Christian, and it's not based on Christian principles, okay? So in a G-rated movie you will find more destruction of the family than you would in any X-rated movie, okay? In other words, you can watch pornography and you know what that is. I mean, the devil doesn't need to deal with that. He already owns it. You can see what it is. Yeah, like but, you're just saying the pornography is evil, but we know it. It's straight out in your face uh, evil. Right, right. but G-rated, you go, wow, that's great, G-rated. Oh, man, that must be nice. Yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll put my kid in front of this TV and let the TV babysit my, my kid for three or four hours. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. This is where the poison is. And I'll give you an example. One of the greatest enemies of God right now, as far as the studios, is Disney. Okay? Disney. The word Disney, do not let that deceive you, my friend. Disney is the enemy it does not like God, okay? It, 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 Disney is an enemy to the family, okay? They have sold out, okay? Uh, they're very much into sexual perversion. Uh, they want to destroy the family. If you go on to Disney and you watch some of the Disney shows, the, the quote, family shows, you'll see little bits and pieces of how the young kids are, 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 are disrespecting their parents, okay? Or they'll have a parent, especially a dad, Lynn, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but they'll have a father figure which is kind of weak, okay? He's kind of pushed around. He doesn't, he seems... I've noticed, I've noticed that Disney and Nickelodeon and all that stuff, what they yeah. do is they make the parents look like a bunch of dumb bimbos that are never home and they're always just happy-go-lucky and the kids are all smart aleck and sarcastic and and know right. it all, and their eyes were belling right. against the parents, yes. Right, and you say, well, maybe that's the way it is. Oh, come on. I mean, I, I can't tell you when I walked into somebody's house and I ever saw a family like that. It's not the way it is. But when kids watch it enough and, and parents let them watch it, the families become that. Because I don't know if you know, if you can relate to this, but when I was a kid going to movies, I would go watch, uh, you know, my heroes on screen. And at that time, it was like Clint Eastwood and Charles Bronson. You know, they, these were my heroes. And I would walk out of that theater kind of like acting like them and feeling like them. Man, I was ready to take on the world. Well, what do you think kids go through when they watch these Disney movies and these, uh, uh, this thing called uh, Netflix Kids, which is from the pits of hell? You know, they take this stuff into their brain and they start processing it and they start acting like these kids. OK, it becomes their world. So so I'm sharing this with you so that your 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 followers, your listeners will understand that it's not the R rated movies. It's not so much the PG-13. It's the G rated and PG rated movies. Um, I don't go to movies a lot because they disgust me. But yeah, when I, I don't do, I don't watch any movies I mean, i'm even leery of a lot of the so-called christian movies they 
put out these days. And I just want to comment real quick on what you're talking about before you go ahead. Yeah. That um, I have noticed, I don't know the right wordage to use here, so forgive me, but I've noticed a lot of the teenage kids and your kids today, they almost seem empty. It's like they are... Um, it's like they're not really themselves, like they're robots almost. I don't know how to explain it. Like they have no feeling or emotion about stuff. It's like they're right. oblivious to everything and they act just like these kids you're talking about yeah, on these shows. Yeah, they're desensitized. Yeah. Desensitized. Right. That, that has done, that is programmed. That's something that's been set and thought out by an organization. We'll get into that later. This is not by accident. This is by design. Okay. Now it's up to your followers and, and the true believers of God to step up to the plate and take action against this. Okay. I mean, we have the power. We just need to step up and turn, turn the light on. That's all. Um, so I went to a movie, Lynn, the other day. I even don't even want to tell you the name of it because I'm afraid I don't want to promote it. But but it, it's a movie about a little girl who has a gift. She's very smart, okay? And uh, and I, saw, I looked out in the audience, and I saw a lot of kids out there, you know, because it was a seven, eight-year-old child who was a star. And through this whole movie, Lynn, this, this kid is using curse words. I mean, you know, it, and there's, there's sexual innuendos going out, you know, from this little seven, eight-year-old kid. And I'm, I'm just going, it's just utterly disgusting and then i saw another movie which is about a girl and her dog in the military again i don't want to give you the name of that and it was like a pg rated movie great for family great inspiration great story and of course in the middle of the movie she has to use the f word you know drops the f bomb and i'm going why did she even have to say that i mean what's the purpose well there is a purpose the purpose is they want to desensitize the kids they want to get it to the point where nothing bothers them. Uh, they want to tear the family apart as they slowly move in to do what they're going to do. And I don't understand, being a parent myself, and also I grew up in the 80s, I cannot fathom and understand why these parents who are taking their children to these movies, and even a lot of them who aren't necessarily taking them to the movies, think that this is okay and it's normal. And I think one of the big factors there, too, is the fact that we have a lot of single family homes now where the babysitter is the TV, the computer, and electronic devices. And so our kids are being raised by the entertainment industries, by the video game right. industries, Hollywood, uh, music, all of it. Yeah, very, very dangerous. And, and that's why I'm making The Last Evangelist. Um, and if anyone wants to go uh, to la lastevangelist.com, they can sign the newsletter. God told me to build a community uh, for this TV series. Um, and if you choose to donate, that would be great, too. There's a donate button. But, Lynn, that's why I'm making this series is because I kept telling my family, look, the, Hollywood's making crap. And they're, they're, they're not honoring God. And then when they do talk about the end times, it's, there's no repentance. Uh, religion is making garbage because it's not even a lot of times scripturally correct, politically correct maybe. I said, why doesn't somebody just make a movie that tells the truth? And my little boy said, well, Dad, you're a filmmaker. Why don't you do that? And I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So don't you I got, said, you okay. You gotta love the kids, you know. I, you gotta, you gotta love the kids. And and God spoke to me and said, David, kids need a hero. And I said, okay, Lord, show me how to write this. And and I wrote six episodes. A guy, and I feel like he's a hero. He's a broken guy, Len. That's the other problem with with religiosity is they want to put uh, people up on pedestals and worship them, especially these preachers and you know all these evangelists and stuff. And, and, and they stop worshiping God. This guy's a broken guy, but he always is searching for God. He's always honest. He stumbles, he gets up, he understands he has the power of God, and he, and he follows God. And, and I want these kids to see what a real hero looks like. You yeah, because kids don't know what a real hero is today. They come from broken homes. And let me say this, too, that we are seeing what the Bible talks about 
what is good shall be called evil and what is evil shall be called good. For example, right now, those of us who have Christian news channels and alternative media, we're not considered advertiser friendly. So we're making less on the ads that are posted, but it's okay for all this worldly garbage that's out there to have the big name ads and, and they get, you know, the decent pay from the ads for it, but not us Christians. So in a right. sense, isn't that saying what is good is evil and evil good. And I also want to add something personal here that I feel the Holy Spirit just laid on my heart. I want to share with people what you're talking about. And you're talking about the TV is the babysitter and Disney and all this. I want to let people know that, you know, of course, I, I revealed in our last interview we had that I had four different children with different fathers and stuff. And so I was a single working mom with kids and, and everything. And I did that very same thing. I sat the kids in front of the TV and I was very selfish. I was so self-centered. The fact is just because I didn't have an abortion, cause I was tempted to have an abortion and almost did it with a few of my kids. I think that I thought, well, I gave birth to them. So I did the right thing and that's all I have to do. And I was young. And I went out partying and I brought men home in front of my kids while my kids were in their bedroom asleep. I'd bring different men home. And then um, when I wanted to go do my stuff, I would just sit them in front of the TV. And I could tell you, I can't go back and change it. And I just want to tell those moms out there, and I'm sorry, I get teary eyed, but you can't go back and change it. And I, I see my, my oldest daughter. <laughs> is having health problems now and she so feels so alone and her dad has parkinson's and she feels so rejected and alone and she doesn't feel close to me because of what i did and she remembers me bringing men home i'm so sorry she so remembers cool. me bringing men home and my son my oldest son doesn't even believe in god and i can't go back and change it so i just want to tell all of you listening just do what you can do now and God does forgive you and I know he forgives me but you'll never be able to go back and redo it so I just want to tell you to take your responsibility as a parent very seriously and if you are a mother and you've you know you've thought about abortion or thinking about it now don't do that that's not the answer but realize that being a parent is also a call on your life you have a responsibility and being a parent isn't just sitting your kid in front of the TV. I know it's hard. I mean, I remember working so hard and never having, um, you know, getting so frustrated. The kids, a, a kid always needed me. I never had time to do anything. And, and I know that it's difficult, but you'll get through it and God will help you get through it. But once you do these things like I did, you can't go back and change it and redo it. And I would, if I could, I wish I could go back. I told my children about the Lord, but my two older children, they think I'm a joke. They don't take me seriously and they don't respect me because of what I did and decisions I made, you know, in and out of bad marriages, living with men, things that I, I drug them through and I, and I can't go back. God forgives me. God forgives those of you listening. But unfortunately, there is a price to pay in the flesh that God can't always fix and, mm -hmm. and the, the, the burden we must carry. So just I just wanted to say that. I'm sorry. No, no. Listen, I, I'm so glad that you did. And I'm so glad, Lynn, that you are honest enough to say what you said. Do you understand that there's very few Christians that will that be honest like that because they're afraid of being ridiculed? But I want to say this right now that God, I believe, is doing a healing and a reconstruction on each and every one of your kids. Now, I don't know much about your children except what you just ex expressed to me, but I feel like the power of God is actually reconstructing. There's a rebirth. There's a, And I know everything you said about that they were hurt and everything, but you know, God is God, we have to remember, you know, he can, he can raise rocks up to praise him. And if he can do that, he can take your kids and put them right back where he originally intended for them to be. And I believe that's what he's doing. You're going to be honored by this. You're going to be blessed by this. And God's going to be 
honored and glorified by this. You, you wait and see. One day you'll call me and say, David, I can't believe it, but my kids are on fire for God, every one of them. Yeah, you know? it's so hard. And I even, I even have people write to me because... Yeah. I just don't believe we have a lot of time left and it's well, like, and I'm praying so hard. And then of yeah. course, most of my listeners know about my youngest son who has anger issues and lashes out. Right. And so in fact, just about a month or so ago, he got so mad and he's strong. He got so mad. He was trying to go out the front door and it was nighttime and I went to stop him and he fought me and inadvertently flung me to the ground. I landed on the cement and, and skinned my knee and everything. And it's just so hard. People don't realize they think that, oh, Lin Lia sits there and has it made. And I don't. I have things that go on in my own home. And yeah, and it's well, hard. And, and my little boy, the little boy with the anger issues, well, when I got pregnant with him, um, it was a guy I hadn't known long. We slept together and, and here I got pregnant. And um, I was living ungodly. And so anyhow, uh, the guy didn't want anything to do with this pregnancy and disappeared. And so I would watch my little boy when he was about two years old. He would stare out my patio door where I lived at the time. And I would say, what are you looking at? And he turned around and he put his arms up in there. And he's just a little boy, two years old at the time. He said, I'm looking for my daddy, but I can't find him. I don't oh, know wow. where he's at. And that was so sad for me. And he would see my other son's dad come and pick him up for visitation. And he would cry because he thought, why is it? He, he would think that was his dad. Mm -hmm. and so he would cry. Wow. So anyways, my other son's dad adopted him as his oh. own. And, wow. but, but he knows that he has a biological father. In right. fact, I tried to contact his biological father on base, Facebook one time. And he, un, he like uh, blocked me. <laughs> Yeah, and I figure he's better <laughs> off without him anyway. In any ways, but you know, it's just it's so yeah. sad, and I think that's why my son has this anger inside because he has a spirit of rejection upon him. Well, he he knows he has a spiritual father. It may not it may not be sinking in now, but it will be. And sometimes God doesn't allow parents, the biological parents, in the kid in the children's lives because God understands they're better off without them. OK, remember, God, it, everything is preordained, predestined. God has a plan for each and every one of your kids. And and for your followers out there, I know that because people that follow me and, and my fans, they come to me and they share their stories. Of course, I've shared my stories with them. And listen, there are people out there that are in the same boat you're in and worse. And the, the thing is, you have to understand each and every person out there has a specific purpose and a specific uh, duty that God has laid on you in this life. And don't ever think that the devil can ever derail that to the point where God cannot put you back on track again, because God is God. And, uh, and I just, I just get blown away when you tell me these stories, Lynn, as a matter of fact, I want to tell you something I, I didn't even tell you, but uh, after I met you, uh, of course, you know I'm I'm writing the the uh, uh, I'm writing the last evangelist, and as uh, when I met you, I started tailoring uh, one of the lead uh, characters in the TV series after you, after things you've told me. Uh, she's broken. Uh, my character goes to her and is helping her understand what's going on. She's caught in the God was caught in the world of religion. She got caught up in the flesh, you know, so I'm sharing that with you for the first time. I haven't told you that, but um, I did it because I want the audience in, in last evangelist when they go and watch this TV series, Len, I want them to go, you know what, you know why I know this is truth. Do you know, I know it's from God because these are real people. These are real people that are broken, that are chipped, but yet they get back up and they brush off their knees. And they say, because of the power of God in me is greater than the darkness in the world, I'm going to keep going. You see, because religion slaps us down. Religion says, first of all, we're not good enough. And second of all, if we do fall, we've got to go and uh, uh, take some kind of classes and wait two years before we can get in the pulpit and all this crazy stuff that, no, this TV series, Last Evangelist, is about real people doing real things 
just like CSI, just like, you know, uh, just like a regular TV series, action, drama, but yet we have scripture in it, you know? What's well, wrong with having a regular you know TV show? Reading I, the Bible. I remember I used to say this all the time. We can't be whole until we are broken because it's only when we truly fall apart that God takes us and puts us back together because in our lives on this earth, we're always trying to put ourselves together and right. fix ourselves and do it ourselves. But it's when we truly fall apart that we realize that we need God and he is the only one who can really put us back together perfectly. That's and right. it, until we let God put us together and until we, well, let me backtrack until we fall apart and realize that a mess that we made this mess of our lives, we're a mess and just let God do it his way. That's right. We can't be whole. We can't truly know what it is to love the Lord, you know, till we really have been there and we fall apart and we realize that we need him and then we depend upon him and we see him come through for us. And he does. Absolutely. And I feel like there's people out there listening right now that have been put down by religion, that have been put down by your friends because you made mistakes and you feel like, you know, you're not worthy that God doesn't love you. And, and you see, this is the greatest deception from Satan. He wants to derail you. He wants you to not have any faith in God and know that God loves you. But I want to give you a scripture. And it's very simple. It's a very short scripture. It's Galatians 1.10. And I'm going to paraphrase this because I don't have my Bible open. But this is it. Please God and Please God, serve God, and do not try to please men, okay? Uh, let me back it up, okay? Please, don't please men, serve Christ. I think that's pretty much what Scripture says. So what does this mean? It means that if you have a choice and you're going to make man happy or you're going to make God happy, you know what? Go with God. Now, but what's going to happen when you go with God? Uh, you're going to make a lot of people mad, okay? But what did Jesus say? He said that, hey, if, you're, if you love me, you're following me, they're probably going to hate you because they hated me, okay? And, and religion says, no, no, everybody needs to love you. You need to serve man. You need to, no, nonsense. No, you please God and put man second. So, Lynn, that's what you're doing. You're, you're pleasing God when you're honest and you tell these stories. Why are you pleasing God? Because... You're, you're laying these stories out so that you can help people. So therefore, you're pleasing God. You're serving Christ. But you're not really pleasing man because I know there's people out there that's going to condemn you for what you said. And, and, and you know, because that's human nature. But people, listen to me. Stop worrying about the condemnation out there and get up off your knees, brush your knees off. You've got the power of God in you and move forward for the purpose God's given you. Sorry, I got passionate on that one. No, that's great. That's awesome. You know, we prayed before we started recording to let the Holy Spirit take over and to anoint this so it would bless people. You know, listen to me now. I sound all stuffed up because I was crying a while ago. So who cares? <laughs> but um, who, who, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I just yeah. want to add to what you're saying that pleasing God is most important in our lives. And, you know, look at what God has me doing who would ever thought you know not so long ago in my life with what I was doing I've seen evil I've been there I've lived it and I've seen the dead end let me just tell you this for women out there who are living like that it is a dead end it is a dead end I have wasted so much time of my life I'm 45 years old now I've wasted all of this time in my life living for the devil and serving the flesh, and it got me nowhere. But I wouldn't go back and change it only because it has made me who I am right now, and I wouldn't have a testimony to share with anybody for all the things. I mean, there's a lot more that I've been through than this, and you know because I've told you, David, just on the phone yesterday, there's yeah. a lot more. But I will say this, that Everything that's going on in your life or has happened has happened to make you a more passionate and compassionate person. And God can take those things and turn them around and use them 
for the good to help people. And so if you're if you're living in sin today or, and you just feel ashamed of yourself, know that God can take every bit of that shame away and he can forgive you for it. And then he can take those bad things that the devil meant for bad and use them for the good for the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Hey, amen. I have a t-shirt on. I want to share it with you and, and your listeners. It says here, I, I, it says, um, uh, it says, you may not like me, but Jesus said, I am to die for. Oh, I like that. It says, you hear, it says, Jesus thinks I'm to die for. Jesus thinks I'm to die for. Sorry. But it says, you may not like me. You may not like me. World. I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you one. I'm going to get you the last evangelist t-shirt. Yeah, um, one of those too. Just send me yeah. a slew of t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? Um, um, your listeners can get one too if you go to my website, lastevangelist.com, uh, and uh, check it out. But but what I want to say is uh, you may not like me. The world may not like me, but Jesus died for me. Uh, so how many people out there have died for me, huh? Um I want to ask you a question, Lynn, and think about this before you answer. And I'm not, I'm not setting you up to try to get a certain response from you, but, but uh, I want to tell you my situation. I know that the media, when I'm growing up as a kid, I know that movies and television, how much influence they had on my life. In other words, they, how much influence they had on decisions that I made. And I'm talking important decisions, life-changing decisions. And I want to ask you and your listeners out there, how much influence has the media, has television, has movies had on your life in you making those critical decisions, having a moral compass? Do, do, you, do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, and uh, I would ask everybody to really, really sit down and think about that because I can tell you I grew up watching soap operas. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. And she watched Guiding Light and all the others, Young and the Restless, every day. And I'll tell you what, my life became a soap opera. I was actually living out things. Like, soap operas were very important to me. I mean, I would think about them. Like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. You know, so-and-so, kind of like the Who Killed JR <laughs> thing. But anyways, so I started living it out as I got older. And I can look back, and my life seems just like a soap opera. Soap opera. Yeah. Uh, so, Lynn, the thing is, when I was a kid going to the movies, you know, Clint Eastwood, Charles Bronson, I'd walk out of the movies a hero. You know, I could take on any bad guy. And and that's that's why these kids are getting shortchanged, because they don't have heroes. You know, the like you said, the, the darkness is light, the light is dark, the good is bad, the bad is confused and turned around. And what I want to do with Last Evangelist, and we got to start somewhere. You know, I know it's one TV series. I know it's one me and one you all. But you know what? We're God's people. We need to start somewhere. And let's start right here and now. Let's create a hero. Let's create heroes for these kids. This TV series, out, there is going to be bad people, but you got to have bad people to show what good God does. But God's people are going to be real people. They're going to be like you and like me. They're not going to be some religious, you know, people walking on clouds and stuff like that. So let's create a show. Let's get this show funded. Let's get it off the ground so these kids can sit home and watch this growing up. And when they get to be older, this kind of stuff will be in their mind. You know, the God's true people, the way, you know, people, God's people really are. And um, so, you know, the only way to do this, God told me, is to go straight to his people. The only way to fund this thing is go straight to his people and uh, uh, not to go to the studios and have them give us any money. Because, Lynn, what's going to happen if I take money from the studios or, or from networks? They're just going to make me turn it right into what it is that we don't want to watch. So, I mean, that's basically the enemy. So I'm not going to play cards with the enemy. We've got to, you know, we got to get this thing uh, going on our own because yeah I believe I believe you were just telling me the other week over coffee when you came through town um, you're telling me something along the lines that you could easily just get things going 
if you did it through Hollywood, but God has specifically told you no, and you don't want to do that. You want to do it God's way. And the only way to do it God's way is to do it just like you're doing. Through God's people. Yeah. And, and let me tell you something, Len. If it was up to me, I would not want to do it that way. It, this is the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. I'm not used to asking people to donate. Okay. I always thought preachers and all this kind of stuff, it was a weak thing, you know, asking for money. You know, it's not about that. Money is only represent. First of all, money is just paper. It's a way to trade goods and services. Uh, money is just a symbol of someone's uh, uh, belief in something and dedication to something. And so even if someone gives me a dollar now, I, I look at that as much as I do a billion because to me, that's an exchange of heart. Okay, I believe in what you're doing. I want to help you. God said, do not take money from the darkness. It's dark money. Do not do it. And I said, God, how is this going to be possible? He said, I go to my people. Go to my people, and they will, they will make it happen. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to God's people, and God's people is out in uh, Leon's land, you know. So Leon's I, I, land. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you, Lynn, you know, letting me be able to, to, to have a platform to say, to be honest and to talk the way we're talking. I, I really appreciate that because, you know, I've done a lot of radio and television, and some of us been very structured and very kind of what I would call religious. And if I start talking the way I'm talking now, like the way you and I are talking, uh, very quickly they'll take a commercial break. You know, like this one show I did a couple of weeks ago, the guy was taking breaks like crazy. I'm going, what in the world's going on here? Well, you know, when I started talking about real stuff. Well, he didn't want to go there. You know, why? Because it might be offensive to talk about sexual perversion it might be offensive to talk about uh abortion yeah uh, there's one thing about this channel yeah. when i started this channel i told god i said god first and foremost this is your channel not mine i work for you and nobody else and i said any bit of money that i make from this channel is yours because it is god who gives and god who can take away and right. I said, this is your channel. It's for truth. I don't care if it offends people. The Bible tells us that God's truth is an offense to people, even yeah. to the marrow, yeah. piercing to the marrow, like a two edged sword to the bone. Yeah. And so tough, you know, if this it channel is. is about truth. It will remain about truth and it will continue to be um, to be set on truth and run with truth. And if yep. it offends people, you yep. know, I could go tomorrow yep. and change my channel around to YouTube standards and just make tons of money if I wanted yep. to, but I won't do that. It's not about nope. that. That's not my passion and my drive. My drive is the Lord and the <laughs> truth and pleasing him. And if I have to share things, I've been reprimanded by other Christian people for sharing some of the things I share about my past. Even you shouldn't say that. I'm like, you sure you want to say that? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. if the Holy Spirit moves me to say something, I don't care. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a voice. I'm a person on this earth, just like the rest. And I'm not yep. embarrassed and I'm not ashamed. It's what I've done. We all, um, you know, we all do things and that's just the way it is. I'm not embarrassed or ashamed of it. It's, it's my past. It's what has made me who I am today. Absolutely. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you saw a TV show about a girl getting ready to have an abortion uh, and she decides not to do it? Now, I know there have been shows like that. They don't like them too much because it's a thing that Hollywood doesn't want to talk about. However, how many times have you seen a show about a girl who's going to get an abortion and she hears the voice of God and she does not have it because she obeys God? not some parent and not some moral value, you know? Well, you haven't. But guess what? On Last Evangelist, because the story that you told me, I've got a scene that I've written about a girl that actually goes into a clinic. And by the way, in the world of Last Evangelist, uh, abortions are totally legal and they're totally acceptable. Matter of fact, uh, you know, it, they, they look upon you if you don't have one, if well, I don't want to get into details of the story, but but this story is a girl walks into the clinic and hears 
the voice of God speaking to her and feels the baby kicking and decides to follow God and not please man. Because in my story, if she doesn't have an abortion, it's going to turn her, she's going to lose her job. She loses her family and, you know, a lot of other things happen, but she listens to God and I don't want to give, give it away what's going to happen to her, but because she's taken the chip, uh, she's turning away from what she's supposed to be doing and they could just kill her, but something miraculously ha miraculous happens. And I wrote that after talking to you about your, your uh, story that you gave me. Yeah, you don't, you don't see that often. And I want to say two things. Number one, when I was pregnant with my fourth child and found out about it, I had an appointment for an abortion and everything because I already had three kids. I was by myself. I was working my butt off for hospice, a hospice company. I found out my insurance would pay for the abortion. So I would only have to pay $15. Um, the father of her father told me, it's the child or me, which one do you pick? I said, well, so wait a minute, let me make sure I have this correct. I have to have my baby killed or our baby killed or else you won't be with me. See you later. So I had to go through that alone with three children already pregnant. I worked up until my due date. I, I was, it took me eight weeks to recover because I was carrying my other child in a car seat up and down the stairs where I lived at the same time I was carrying the newborn. I remember the day I came home from the hospital, it was like zero degrees out. And I had all these kids and I was by myself. I didn't have help from anybody. It was hard. It's not easy, but I will tell you what, I am so happy. I look at my daughter and how sweet she is and how much I love her. And I would never, ever, ever get rid of her. And I'm so happy I did not go through. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm so happy I did not go through with the abortion and it would be amazing for people to see that story you just talked about yeah. because the, but, which leads to my next comment. All we see anymore, even in the Christian film industry is this watered down, happy go lucky hippie Jesus character, you know, that yeah. everything goes, it's all okay. And he's full of love yeah. and all this. And God is full of love, but there is a price to pay for sin, and God also expects obedience from us. He is forgiving, and he is loving, but he also is a God of judgment at the same time. We see his, We have to look at the whole Bible from start to finish to see God's full personality. We can't just look at a few chapters and verses out of the New Testament. And please, for everybody remember, the Bible ends with the book of Revelation, which is yeah. God's judgment on sin. So he loves yeah. us very much and expects obedience, and he, and he wants us to repent because he does love us. He wants us to truly repent and to come to him. So we've only got a couple minutes left, David. Do you have yeah. anything else you want to share with the people that the Lord is laying on your heart? Yes. Uh, you just brought it up. Time is of the essence, folks. Now is the time. We've got to do this. We need to get last evangelist out to people because— uh, Lynn mentioned the book of Revelations. We're in the last days. And even if you think you're going to get, we're going to get taken up before the tribulation, whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, post that's not the, the thing. I mean, look, we're Christians. We're, we need to look out for other people. If the Titanic's sinking and you know your lifeboat's going to show up, you don't need to say to people, well, I, my lifeboat's coming. I don't need to worry about anybody else. Look, we got to get out there and we got to shout to the mountains and we got to tell the truth. OK, when we go to heaven with with Jesus, we want to go shouting the truth. OK, and, and this this TV series is going to shout the truth. It's going to make people mad. It's going to make uh, the world uncomfortable. It's going to expose things that's happening now with the Antichrist. But we have to do it for, first of all, God's people to wake them up, the ones that are asleep. Second of all, for the children, they deserve it. OK. They deserve the truth. And then we need the world, who God wants us to fish out of the world, we need to proclaim what the truth is. Most people, Lynn, that come to me and hear me talk about God the way I talk about God, most of them, especially in Hollywood, they go, I've never heard anybody talk about God like that. Not, I've never heard of that God. You know why? Because religion, most of the time, is not God. So. 
Yeah, it, I have people write to me all the time and rebuke me whenever I talk about repentance or God's judgment and tell me um, I'm a fake and a liar because that is not God. God is just all love. And they don't understand yeah. that love is judgment. But let me give an example. Yeah. And I've given this one before. If you see your child running in the street in front of traffic or about to ingest poison, you would scream at the top of your lungs to get their attention and knock it out of their hand or pull them out of the street and tell them, don't you do that. You might even give them a spanking on the butt for sure. doing that because not because you're an, a mean parent, but because you love your child and you don't want them to get killed. You don't want them to suffer. You don't want them to get hurt. Well, God right. is a God of love and he doesn't want us to suffer. It's not him who's necessarily, um, you know, sitting up there striking us with lightning for making mistakes. No, he knows that if we serve the enemy, then we are going to reap what the enemy has to give to us. And he wants to protect us from that. And he's trying to warn us, don't do these things or this is what's going to happen because he does love us. So I get that all the time. The yeah. people think that God is just this sweet, sugary, sweet business. And that's not necessarily the way it really is. Yeah, well, that's the candy land Jesus. That's the religious Jesus. That's the money making Jesus, by the way. OK, but what is repent? Repent is to turn away from. And I'm saying right now, we need to turn away from the ways of Hollywood for what they're making and stop supporting that stuff. We need to turn away from the religious system. Stop supporting their movies because they're making a lot of money off these, quote, faith-based movies. Some of them are okay, but you got to wade through the truth. I mean, through the uh, darkness to ever find any light. Let's turn away from all that. Let's turn to God and let's let's make stuff God wants us to make and tell the truth. Have real people, real situations, and we put scripture in it and we show the world out there they don't have to get prepared and get all, you know, ready before they can come before God. They come just as they are. Just you know, just as they are. And and that's what we need to do, folks. Please. We need we need to get this done. Uh, so, you know, I'm sorry I get all frustrated on this. To think Hollywood's got a billion dollars, and I'm sitting here talking about, you know, it's just, but I know out there somewhere, God told me, there's, there's, there's somebody that has a lot of money, and God's speaking to them and saying, you know what, you need for this purpose to help fund this project. I just know that they're out there. And I know that God's going to speak to that person, and it's, and it's going to be very substantial to get this thing off the ground then and get it running. And not just make this, but make a whole bunch of this, you know. Amen. Just Amen. And again, I'm going to give out that website. And I'll also, when I go and I uh, work on this recording we're doing here for all of you and I edit, I will add the link on the screen for you to physically see. But it is lastevangelist.com. Again, that is lastevangelist.com. So go visit David's website and subscribe to the newsletter for regular updates. And if the Lord lays it on your heart to help him, even if it's just $1, whatever yeah. it is, please help him get this out because it, because it is truth and it will save the lost. People will see it and be blessed by it. Well, thank you so much, David. And I can't wait to have you on again. I really appreciate you taking the time to to sit down and, and chat with me here for my uh, YouTube subscribers and for anybody else that stumbles across this video. Lynn, I just can't tell you every time we have a show together, I just get so blessed. And I thank God for being here. I thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for being here. And uh, I want to thank your loyal, loyal listeners who love you so much uh, for helping you and supporting you. Uh, you're one of the few voices out there. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless everybody out there in Leah's land. Well, God bless you, David, and you as well. You know, I've had, for my people out there listening, I've had coffee with David. I've talked to him in great uh, detail. He is the real deal. And for those of you who are leaving messages below the videos that I have with David about, or, or I've received emails from people too, about well have you seen the the movies that this man has done he's not the he's not real let me just tell you this he has a past 
And yes, he did produce movies that were worldly. And there's nothing he can do about it. He can't go down and remove it from the internet. So yes, he does have a past. As I said in the beginning of this video, he was a former Hollywood film producer. And you acted in movies and stuff. And you, he can't go back and change that. But praise the Lord. You know, he is a born-again, spirit-filled Christian and loves the Lord with all of his heart. And we all have a past. I've shared my some of my past. You don't even know half of it. But I've shared yeah. some of my past with you. David has a past. But praise the Lord, we're born again and we're new creatures in Christ. And for those of you listening, if the Lord moves you, I'll just say once again to help donate to what he's trying to do here. By all means, please go to his website, lastevangelist.com and and support him in any fashion even if it's just subscribing to the newsletter so you could keep track of what is going on well thank you again david and god bless you yeah lynn god lynn one more last thing i need to say is you know all these movies i made because i told you i said you know i can never erase my past mine's all over the internet and all over you know dvd so but the thing is what's interesting and i think you can uh uh testify to this is that when God uses people like us that have had a dark past, a broken uh, past, we, he actually uses us and, uh, in a way that's sometimes harder than use, using people that haven't been broken because we know all the secrets. You see, it's like uh, I knew a police department one time that hired a, a thief that was in prison for a long time that knew how to break locks, and they hired him to go in and design locks that could never be broken. So you see, people like us know what it's like to be in the darkness, and we know all those dirty secrets. So God can use us to bam, just smack the devil right, right between the eyes, you know. Amen. And those of you listening, just be sure and really pray for us and pray for our families, because yeah. when you're out in the front lines of enemy warfare, the enemy will hit you the hardest. So the enemy does come after us very hard for what we do. We put out the truth. We make the devil mad. So please offer up extra prayers for us and just cover us daily with the Holy Spirit protection and with God's anointing. And you're so right, David. And I want to have you back again here soon. And I yeah. just thank you again for, for coming on my show. It's always a blessing. Oh, thank you, Lynn. God bless you, too. And I love you guys out there, okay? Yes, we love all of you and pray for you, too. God bless everybody. Thanks, David.